Uh, morning and uh, uh, good afternoon. Good morning, Shui. Good afternoon, Rakesh. Hello. Hi, David. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Samir. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Hey. Hi, everyone. Good day. Hi, Femen. Hey, Femen. Hi, Wendy. Hi. So, do we want to start with the refactoring uh, items that was sent uh yes we, we can start with that uh will uh pritesh or maybe join probably i'm not sure if pritesh is going to join but rakesh uh, is here so i think we should be able to okay uh then we can start uh patrick do you want to share uh, the screen or some information, uh, or I can I can share the page. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my screen. Thanks. Uh, could you see my screen? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Uh, do you want to start? Um, okay. Okay, I, I think firstly we want to uh, uh, we want to give a brief uh, uh, background about this uh, refactoring. Uh, actually, we are approaching the uh, RC one release, right? It's a uh, it's a more stable version for for the overall notary project and the, uh, the overall notary project including not only the PLI but also uh, the library which is uh, quite important and uh, during our de development work we see there is a need to refactor uh, the notation Go library to make it more uh, uh, maintainable uh, extendable and uh, especially uh, for the upcoming features uh, post uh, uh, RC1 and also including some features uh, developer to be developed in RC1. And this refractory uh, doesn't mean we will change the uh, functionality. It, it's mo mostly from the design of the, uh, the code, the library. And also I list uh, several uh, features here which can benefit from the refactoring work, like the support of the debug option, which the library needed to provide uh, support and also 
last time we discussed about the support for the ratify. So uh, there is also an issue using verify without a repository is also uh, can be covered by the uh, refactoring work. And also for the OCI artifact tab, uh, how to handle this uh, referral, the OCI referral API, which is different from the uh, previous the ORAS uh, referral API. And also the last but not least, uh, we during uh, during our daily work, we find that the sign workflow is not fully compliant with the sign spec. Uh, so, uh, yeah, short summary, we think uh, there is a need to, to do this uh, refractory work. And here is a proposal mainly uh, prepared by uh, Patrick uh, uh, and the team. Thank you. Okay, that's the uh, background and the purpose. Hey, Rakesh, uh, 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 is there anything uh, based on what you scanned through? Uh, I posted some comments on the doc. Um, do you want to go through the comments or do we want to do that offline? Um, anything works for me? Uh, maybe maybe Patrick, we can uh, start with addressing the comments firstly. Yeah, sure. Because it seems the pretension and the repetition already review this document. Yeah, sure. Um, so the first one is this functionality exists today. Uh, using verify result a repository. Um, Yeah, the current uh, way um, or the existing way uh, for verifying signatures without needing a repository is by um, creating a dummy repository object and then passing the prefetched signatures. Um, um, I think this pro this um, refactoring proposal is coming up with an alternative, right? Uh, so we can skip that um, comment. Pritesh is not here, but uh, um, so first thing I think uh, the original uh, verification um, interface is uh, does not align with uh, with that one uh, with the one in the uh, notation package. Um, as you can see in the package verification. The verify function, uh, the verify function signature is taking a context and a URI, right? And I'll put in a signature verification outcome. Um, however, in the notation package, the verify has a different interface. Oh, that is the old uh, verifier. That's why this yeah, so is that's, different. Uh, that's one point that we need this uh, refactoring. So we want to align with the uh, uh, interface between verification and notation, right? So after refactoring, the notation becomes, uh, the verify becomes this. Yeah, but this isn't answering the question why we need to refactor to support prefetch signatures. Um, in other terms, um, verifying signatures without a registry. Um, that's why I was saying um, there is existing in with the current code, customers can do it, but um, there are some problems because customers need to implement a registry repository. Um, I think the proposal you have um, should provide uh, probably a new method for verifying signatures. I did not see that in the talk. Probably you can address that later. Shri, do you want to address this? Uh... Uh, I think we have discussed in the last uh, notary call that is, uh, it's not good to let the customer to implement their own uh, repository uh, method uh, to have a mock that is to, and then provide it to the verifier uh, because that means all other, yeah, yeah. I think all we, other customers need to implement that, that 
And although it's just like three or 40, three, uh, 30 to 40 lines of code, but actually it's just code. And we need to provide more about like testing stuff. Like it will be like more than 100 lines of code. So uh, one application needs to write one, over 100 lines. If there are more applications to use notary, uh, that's a notation code, that means they need they all need to do that. But I don't think it's a good one because uh, we are not just shipping the notation CI, we are also shipping the uh, notation Go uh, so that other applications uh, Shiva, can I'm going to shortcut yeah. this discussion. I, yeah. I don't think there is any disagreement with that. Uh, yeah. But in the current, um, the refactoring proposal, um, it is not providing any new method for uh, verifying uh, offline uh, verifying signatures that are prefetched. Uh, so yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, so for that, um, so currently we can we have the new verifier that is we have a verify interface that's the new verifier well. Uh, implement that interface. So as you can see in the verifier, it verifies the contacts, the signature, and giving the verify options. So uh, for example, Ratify can uh, prefetch all the signatures and into memory or somewhere else, and uh, just call the verify signature blob and with options directly. So there's no point to point uh, to uh, serving a repository object. Uh, so obviously, uh, uh, that's the advanced uh, usage uh, for regular user. They can just call the uh, the static verify function. So the static verify function passes in a verifier and also a repository and, and also a, 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 re a reference and so on. So this next function will fetch the signature from the repository by, for the user and then use the verifier to verify that signature. So basically we, we have, after refactoring, we have a verify interface and also a, verif a verify function to the user for convenience. Uh, similarly, uh, we have the same thing for the signer. We have the signer interface and also the sign uh, uh, function. Uh, so uh, Patrick can screw up yeah, a bit. Uh, uh, that's the older one. Uh, you might want to show the, the new one, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the signer interface. And after that, that's the sign uh, method. So for the sign, it's just sign a single uh, uh, artifact to a, uh, a signature. Uh, that actually returns a signature envelope. Um, and also for sign method, uh, it takes a signer and also a repository. So it will uh, uh, fetch the, uh, uh, the descriptor and use a signer to sign it to generate a signature envelope, then upload the signature envelope and also the signature manifest to the most repository uh, in one shot. Uh, is there any questions, uh, Rakesh? Rakesh, can you copy them? Oh, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. It looks like there are two different code paths that um, users can follow, right? One is um, uh, directly using the verify method where they will pass the uh, repository and verify method will fetch the signatures and do all the verification. And the other is verifier, um, which is for um, um, verifying prefetched signatures. Uh, yes. Um, can we combine these two into one so that there won't be any confusion for customers on what to use? Uh, sure, Apache can do that. Uh, 
Yes, obviously we don't have a documentation in this uh, document, uh, but when we implement those uh, interfaces, we will have the uh, full documentation. Okay, so the verify method that takes the repository is actually a method on verifier, is that correct? Uh, pardon? So the verify method that takes yeah. repository as an input is that part of the verifier um, it's taking a verifier interface. it's it's taking a verifier as an input so uh, uh, yeah so so the verify function takes a verifier and also a repository mm -hmm. so basically uh, the, the uh, after refactoring uh, we are decoupling the verifier and the repository so that the code can be more maintainable. And also the functionality can be uh, uh, decoupled and can be used individually. So um, should we correct me if I'm wrong? Um, so if we want to like verify a prefetched uh, signature locally, we will only use the, uh, this verify function here. And if we want to verify a signature remotely, we will use the uh, one below and pass a verifier into this function to verify yes. signatures. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Basically it is without repository and with repository, so. Yes, so we are decoupling uh, verifier and repository. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, Sajay mentioned mm -hmm. the channel window. So Patrick, can you provide some uh, examples? So uh, it can be, uh, understand easily. Uh, maybe you can do it later. Okay. Uh, let me. Uh, why does verify method need verifier object? Uh, pardon, can you say that again? On line number 74, uh -huh. um, yeah, the verify method is accepting verifier object, right? The second parameter. Uh, what is that for? Uh, obviously, you need a verifier to verify the count that you have fetched, right? So we see this. Uh, we see this, we see this verify function. We, we are going to call verifier dot verify to verify signatures. Uh, I see. And the signatures uh, are from it, this repository. So intuitively, uh, verify should be part of verifier object, right? Um, it, uh, at least for me, it is not intuitive that I need to create a verifier object and then. I need to pass that to verify method. Uh, can the verify method itself create a verifier object within itself? Because um, it's just verifier dot new, right? Uh, uh, okay. I think it's the drawback of the Go uh, Golang uh, thing uh, because Golang does not support extension methods. Uh, so I think it's better to have a static method here and pass the verifier to it. Otherwise, all the verifier need to implement this common uh, verify function. Uh, and also, as you know, Golang does not support ab uh, abstract class. So uh, that's the only way. Uh, I see. Um, okay, I need to read more about that and uh, uh, regret that comment. Let's move on to the next comment. Uh, <clears throat> what's the purpose of export annotation? Uh, so what's the purpose of the annotation? Uh, so um, uh, that's a good question, actually. Um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, so for, for regular sign, we don't need to export annotation. Uh, but I'm also thinking about the, the uh, 
offline signing and offline verification, uh, especially for the offline signing. So uh, to do offline signing, uh, you, you, don't, uh, you not only need to uh, generate a signature, you also want to uh, generate the, uh, uh, the signing, uh, the signature ma manifest. So uh, as you can see in the uh, regular uh, or uh, signing workflow, you, you will generate a signature blob and then a signature manifest referencing the blob. And also you have the annotations in that signature manifest. So if we can export the annotation, that means uh, the caller can uh, construct the, uh, the signature manifest by itself. And later it can use auras or other tools to uh, push the local uh, uh, signature blob and the local uh, signature manifest to the remote uh, without losing any information. So basically it allows uh, everything can be generated locally and then uh, upload to the remote at, uh, at in one shot, yeah. Uh, I know that is the, the support of the signing, uh, the uh, uh, support the support of local signing is in the post RC1. Uh, so if we are uh, not good with that, we can uh, remove it in the RC1 and uh, add, uh, add it back in the RC2 or so on. Is it uh, just declared in the struct or is it used anywhere, Shive? The export annotation in RC1? Uh, it's just export, uh, it's just in the struct. So it's not used anywhere because it's for uh, local signing. Yeah, then that's fine, right? Trackish, there is no need of removing as such. Uh, this will be visible to the library consumers, right? Um, yes, we it's want for... to give them. Yeah. Uh, if we are not supporting that, um, uh, let me, uh, uh, let, me uh, let me uh, look at, uh, just let me check it again. Um, Okay. Uh, I oh, I think uh, we still need that, uh, because the uh, the sign uh, method uh, requires that. Yeah. Uh, because from uh from outside of signer uh, uh, it does not oh okay it does know it it does not know about the uh the signing certificate. So. That means uh, using the signer, uh, the sign method cannot uh, know the the sum print of the um, the sum print of the uh, the signing certificate. So uh, we still need that. Sorry, uh, we, we we still need that in the current implementation. Oh, or maybe you can uh, do other things like. Uh, export the uh, the signing certificate instead of exports the uh, the the annotation. But I think the export annotation is more convenient. Rakesh, do we have to look into this further or we can move to the next comment? Oh, we can move. Okay. I don't have any okay. comments on this. Okay. Um, I think the scripts are agnostic. Um,
Sorry, can uh, you, uh, not sure what Ritesh yeah. meant by this. <laughs> we need descriptor, right, for signing? And let's, uh, let's, let's just go through uh, Rakesh's uh, question. Yeah. Let's do why, that. why verify? Okay, we already discussed the verify. Can we move to the next question? Uh, I think the question is about returning the verification results to the API caller. The API is just returning the descriptor, right? I'm not sure how useful that is. Yes. So uh, I have a question about returning the uh the verification result do we really need to uh, return the detailed outcome uh, i don't think so i think the most of the time uh the verifier or the, the caller to the verify function just needs the result it's it's uh, it's succeeded or it's failed uh and uh, in the trust policy we we really do have uh policies like enforced and uh, uh, sleep and also loved. So uh, for enforced, if it, if it fails, then it fails. Uh, for skip, if it's skip, then it passes. For log, uh, uh, that means we we are calling the logger to log the information and, and that's it. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, how useful if we return all these uh, outcomes. I mean, the, all these details. Uh, they will be useful for users who want to inspect the signature, right? Um, who want to understand what happened with uh, the individual validations, like integrity, authenticity, yeah. expiry, revocation, all those. I think they will be useful for, useful for curious customers. Yeah, but do we have a scenario for that? Uh, the, the reason why I'm asking this is uh, uh, because we are shipping the uh, notation Go as a, a production product. Uh, so we, are, we want to keep the, uh, the exposed APIs or exposed uh, variables constant to be minimum. Uh, so uh, that we can maintain less uh, APIs and also uh, uh, exposed uh, objects. Uh, so to uh, to have a, I mean, to adding new stuff is easier in the future uh, versions, but to deprecate or update a uh, API is hard in the future if we have stable APIs. Yeah, I I agree with that, uh, but I think providing um, all the details of a verification result that would be helpful. Uh, for example, we are we were thinking about um, notation inspect command, right? Where users can uh, take a look at, at the signature and um, what happened with the verification results. Um, I think for notation CLI to um, provide all those details, it needs um, this API to return the Verification outcome. Uh, we think, I, yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, okay, we think uh, in a production level, uh, user will focus more on the whether the verification itself is successful or not. It, it he or she won't focus too much on the details of why this verification like succeeded or failed. Uh, if they want yeah. to know, they can check the logs. Actually, yes, we will. We will. We will. We are still logging the the details. Uh, logs of uh, notation. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, in the future implementation, uh, if, uh, so all the uh, op operations like the enforce or skip or log, they all uh, will be. Uh, logged, uh, but they uh, log in different levels. Uh, that works for notation CLI users, right? Not for um, library users. Uh, so and they also, uh, yeah, if they put something in the, to the logger, then the, the notation Go users also log it. But uh, 
uh, I'm actually, because without a scenario, I'm actually confused that uh, why does the, uh, why do the, the SDK users will check the detailed outcome of the uh, verification? Should that be checked by the policy? If it's checked the policy, then why they need to check individually? But if they need to check the, them individually, then why they need the policy? Uh, I'm confused with that without a scenario. Oh, I, I mean, they can use the policy to let notation evaluate the outcome rate, but still uh, they may want to see what happened with the individual web validations. Um, that seems like a perfectly valid use case, um, like for customers who, um, who may use notation for signing other things, uh, not just container images, but uh, more, more other types of digital artifacts. I think it would empower all the um, users that are directly integrating with the notation co library. I can add some more detail on the inspect, right? So I think we were looking for multiple reasons for inspect. One of them was, you know, so we don't recommend this, but customers can inspect the signature to identify the public key. Uh, there was one example that Steve had put up as an example for notation inspect. So if you want to solve notation inspect using some other method, that's fine. As long as there's a way to inspect what's inside a signature in a human readable manner. Uh, it's not expecting the signature. It's uh, it's the uh, uh, detected result of verification. Why it's failed? I mean, both are part of the verification outcome object, so both can be done. Can we use that log that? Not use the use the logger interface here. Locks are not possible. So for a uh, programmatic system, we can't ask users to use logs. Uh, um, so Rakesh, can you uh, uh, just uh, write a scenario for a real use case for that uh, so that we can consider how to add the uh, outcome in? Uh, I mean, uh, one, uh, one thing is uh, that is, uh, so as you can see in the uh, verify options, there's a uh, uh, there's a field that is coming out called verification details. So uh, that actually is reserved uh, for all, uh, it's for exporting the, uh, the the details of the verification outcome. Uh, so Patrick can screen left. Uh, as you can see in the verify in the verify option, there is a, a field called verification details. Yeah, this one. Uh, so uh, maybe we can put the outcome in here. Uh, if the uh, the user really uh, care about the details. Uh, this is an input to the verify command, right? Um, how is that going to tell you? It's going to here. Yeah, yeah but we need to return um, the result to the caller. So it should yes. be in the return. Yeah, it it's an option. Return, right? Yes. So, uh, so because it's an option, so it can be optionally returned. Uh, you mean like um, we'll write to the same verify option struct and users can use them? So, uh, so each time uh, uh, you call the verify, you will uh, provide a verify options. So, if the verification details is not nil and uh, the verify uh, uh, method of the verify will uh, fill in the details after the verification. Uh, because in the most scenario, uh, uh, all the details will be ignored and, uh, and we don't need to even generate the details. Uh, we need to generate the results anyway, right? In the verify method, 
because we generate the results first and then go over them to decide whether verification succeeded or passed yes. uh, at least in the current implementation implementation that's how things are done so we'll need to generate that return um, result object uh, yes. i think not, now the question is like why not just return it um, as is if customer wants to ignore they can ignore otherwise yes. they'll uh, yes Yes, you can, you can see simple, you right? that you are saying that uh, in the most scenario, uh, this object is optional. Why just put it, not put it into the options? It's optional, right? It's totally fun, fun, uh, optional. And in the most case, no user will care about it. Uh, unless you give me a real scenario indicating that, okay, in the most of the time, uh, the customer need that outcome and they will use that outcome to determine their business logic. Uh, is that the is that a go idiomatic approach um, returning things to users? Um, my understanding is that the function itself returns the result, and users can either choose to ignore it by like storing that in an underscore or into a real variable if they want to use it. Uh, I'm not sure if we can write the result in the verify options itself since verify options it is a is an input to the method uh, probably we are going to technical here um, i think we can take this off and i can update the comment with a couple of scenarios where uh, the verification result would be useful for users and we can go from there yes yes uh, yes please oh, thanks Oh. Um, okay, we already go to this one. Can we rename it to? Okay, this is from Pritish. Uh, we need to indicate that these are uh, headers. Can we add header prefix? Rakesh, uh, could you provide more details about this one? Uh, yeah, the verification plugin and verification plugin minim minimum version. Um, those, um, the variable names don't tell me what they are. Uh, probably we can add a prefix um, to them saying these are headers. Um, for example, in the uh, verifier uh, trust store, um, package, we prefix them with validation or whatever, right? Uh, yeah, we can do something similar with um, verification plugin and verification plugin min version. Oh, oh uh, I know what you are saying about. It. Okay, so we need to prefix this uh, constant name with something like header or attribute, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, Patrick, you can add them uh, right now. <laughs> uh, like what? Uh, you mean rename this to? Yes, yes. Yeah. Just add a perfect. Like, uh, like this? Yeah, yeah, header or other things, that's fine. Uh, because they are all, they are all header stuff. signature signature are eternal. We so I guess we just discussed uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. And the oh, next comment as well. Provided. Okay. So we'll readdress this one as well. I will rename level to verification level. 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 Uh, trust policy verification makes more sense than trust policy level. Uh, I don't have an opinion on that, uh, uh, Patrick. Yeah, uh, let's rename it. So we want to rename level to 
verification manual. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, all these renamed stuff are coming from the spec. So in the spec, it says level and uh, uh, action is action and uh, uh, validations. Uh, in the table, it says validations. And uh, maybe Patrick can uh, just show up the spec. Uh, if it's fine, then we can proceed, uh, Patrick. You can change later. Okay. Underline the spec. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we still need to show the spec because in the spec, uh, there are there are also some naming issues. That's why we are, yeah, we are so confused about the names. So, uh, if we can, uh, yeah, yeah, go to the not uh, notary project. I, uh, yes, there's a test trust those trust policy. Yes, right. Uh, scrolling down to the table. Okay, so uh, on the first column, it says verification level. Also, it says good. We can rename the level to verification level uh, as the uh, Redcash suggested. Uh, for the uh, uh, action, action um, uh, there are, there's no uh, official name for the name like enforce, log, and skip. Uh, maybe it's called actions or verify actions. It's, it's okay. Uh, um, and for the items like uh, integrity, uh, authenticity, uh, authentic timestamp and expiry and the, the reporting check, uh, they are all classified as validations. So uh, should we call it validation or uh, if we call them verification type, then it's it's not the same as the spec. Uh, maybe we should uh, update the code or we should update this spec. Uh, any, any input from others? I think we should call it as valid uh, validation type. And then the actions as validation types, uh, validation actions. And all these things go into verification, right? Verification is uh, looking at details and then telling whether something passes or not. So the signature verific the the act of saying yes or no can be called as um, verification. Uh, but all the things, the individual details that go in the verification process can be called as validation type and validation action. I think we can cut this uh, back uh, if um, if need be. Yeah. So uh, uh, so uh, Patrick can go back to our uh, MD doc. So let's go back to the uh, comment. Okay. So. Uh, so action will be at, at validation uh, action and the validation will be at validation. right. So uh, let's uh, update that uh, after this meeting. Cool. Yeah, maybe uh, Patrick, you can just uh, reply to that comment. Uh, like I, I added a, a to-do here. I, I will remember okay. it. Uh, okay, I think I was able to review only till the trust or trust policy uh, sections. Um, I need to go through um, registry and other sections. Uh, I'll do that um, later today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this was a lengthy talk, so couldn't get time to review the entire talk. Yeah, it's pretty long. 
<laughs> yes, it's very nice. It takes like us like more than 20 hours to do the second thing. Samir? Yeah, thank you, Bunny. Uh, she may have a question. So this is great. I think we are making progress here. But is there a scope estimate on how, when we will be done with this refactoring? Let's imagine today or tomorrow Rakesh says, it all looks good. Like Pratish says, it all looks good. You start implementing. How long will it take to refactor all this? I think it's a good question for Patrick. Can you uh, we target this uh, uh, at RC1. Oh, so 11.14 is the target. Uh, like what, what date uh, is November, November 15th, right? November 15th. Yeah, November 15th. So we need to do the actual PR reviews in advance of that. So not so we'll have actual PRs coming for Pratesh and others to review before then. So we have. I think a... this is going to be a lengthy uh, PR. Uh, I think there will be multiple PRs, right? Uh, but all of them are going to be lengthy because this is going to touch everything uh, in Notation Go and as well as Notation CLI. Um, it will touch unit tests, syntax tests, and everything. So let's allocate um, sufficient time for uh, code reviews. So basically, we will have six peers to get this done. Some of them are uh, not very long, but some of them might be lengthy, like this one. So, Patrick, yeah. have you have you allocated the work and divided when what is going to be completed so that we can get the code reviews? Sorry, peer uh, reviews done. Code reviews done. Uh, we still need to have a have a discussion about this. Okay. I think it's today. It's going to be today. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Feynman, you have your hand. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I want to share another reason of retract refactoring notation go, um, and that might be ignored by uh, ignoring this uh, refactoring documentation. So. May I quickly share my desktop and uh, I will show you an example for this reason. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm also sharing the same uh, hack markdown of refactoring notation Go. Uh, actually, I just added two comments for uh, the beginning. So uh, I think it is quite worthy for us to refactor in notation Go as we might uh, consider that notation Go is uh, evolving into a generic uh, Go library for, uh, you know, sign and verify. That means, uh, apart from the benefits to notation itself, um, developing a generic and uh, extensible library is also critical for other projects to consume our notation, notation API and extend uh, the ecosystem of notation. Uh, I just want to share an example uh, from another uh, open source project requests us to uh, for sign and verifying uh, capability. Uh, this is another issue from Fiscal Security Project. Uh, it is also another uh, open source project in uh, CNCF incubating. So um, it is a cloud native uh, runtime project uh, maintained by Sysdic. Yeah. Maybe you can uh, go to its website to know more about uh, what Fiscal is. Uh, but uh, here I want to quote, uh, there's another project request to uh, sign and verify commands. And uh, I just leave uh, my comments to uh, advocate uh, the capability that provided by uh, Notation Go, the signing and verifying capability that they can invoke uh, to, they can invoke uh, the APIs provided by Notation Go. Yeah, maybe you can quickly go through the, uh, context in this issue. Their proposal is to add sign, sign and verify commands in FACO's FACO Cato, a CLI uh, in FACO project. And uh, they also request uh, a storage to store the OCI artifacts. So uh, they find ORAS artifacts back and uh, they ask us uh, in the ORAS community. So we, we, we reply to them and uh, also rec recommend uh, they to 
investigate more on uh, notation goal. Yeah, maybe you can, um, we can go through the context here. So currently they find cosine can help them to uh, solve this problem and uh, cosine also provided uh, the sign verifying capability. Uh, but if we can provide uh, a good API doc and uh, a very generic uh, APIs for them to consume and invoke, I think we can beat cosine this time and uh, uh, we can let Falco to use notation Go in their scenario. So go back to uh, go back to the uh, proposal here. So uh, I think two additional things uh, we might need to prepare after refactoring uh, notation Go. The first one is API uh, architecture diagram to illustrate the logic internally. Uh, the second thing we might need is a developer-friendly API documentation landed on the Go doc. Uh, in this way, uh, developers might understand uh, what the capabilities provided by notation Go library, and then they can invoke uh, the APIs provided by notation Go. Uh, the similar thing we did is ORAS Go and ORAS Go uh, API doc. Uh, you will find uh, ORAS Go has a very developer-friendly uh, Go doc landed on the uh, package.go.dev. And uh, every functions can uh, land it where on this page, and you will find examples on each function. So in this way, we see a lot of adopters that uh, choose ORAS Go and uh, invokes APIs uh, with ORAS Go. And uh, they, uh, even they didn't use ORAS CLI, but they find the value provided by ORAS Go. So they choose to integrate ORAS Go in their products. So that is another scenario that we can consider in uh, refactoring. Yeah, just about uh, the value uh, that I foresee uh, in refactoring notation Go. Any questions or uh, or comments you want to discuss? Or is it make sense for uh, my additional uh, reason for <laughs> refactoring notation code? I'm not sure uh, if I am uh, telling this story very clearly. No. Rakesh, do you have any questions? Like, <laughs> no, I don't have any questions or comments. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, before we have before refactoring this library, I think uh, most of us might uh, might thought uh, notation Go is designed specifically for notation CLI. But uh, right now, we can uh, we can foresee that notation Go is involving to a generic library that can also provide services and APIs for other projects to consume. I think that is the thing I want to call out. That's good explanation, Finn. So I have a query. I Rakesh, you tell me like, will the support including the customer metadata that we want to sign as well? Customer supplied met metadata or assertions? Like this refactoring um, will it? Hmm. I don't think this refactoring will make it any better or worse uh, for that feature. Samir, you're talking about different artifact types. No, I'm talking about no, no, I'm talking about a roadmap item I added, which I've of course not brought it into any release yet. But I was speaking with some um, uh, some customers, and uh, they brought up a use case that they would like to sign additional metadata as well. Mm -hmm. And I added a roadmap item. I can share that, David. Uh, so I'm just curious if um, that if that will be solved by or that or will that become any easier or not? I think I hear what Rakesh is saying. 
that it may not get easier or not. But I was thinking about it in terms of CLI commands, but what I'm hearing payment say is that you wanna design it in a manner that the libraries can also be used by other open source projects. So even though I wrote this roadmap item from a CLI perspective, now just listening to Feynman, I'm thinking the library should support additional metadata as well. Uh, library can support that. Uh, there is um, sign options structure um, using which uh, users can provide arbitrary metadata uh, once we have this feature. So this um, uh, this proposal is not making it any worse uh, for adding that feature. Okay, thanks. We have four more minutes. Is there any way we can talk about ratify? The ratify supporting the feature for trust store and trust policy. Is there any anyone is aware of that feature? When is it going to be? Is it scheduled for development? And uh, is there a go forward strategy for that anywhere, anytime? Shiva, David. Can you, what's the question again? This oh. is the same thing that we discussed last uh, call, David, uh, where ratify. Uh, supporting the trust store and trust policy feature. Is there anything that is being uh, scheduled for development? Has it been? Yeah, for development? I mean, I would say, yeah, yes, we're planning on this. I mean, it's actually up in our public milestone right now, um, but I would say that this would definitely help the, the movement of it. So getting this refactoring, it would make it easier for ratify as well as uh, Falco and other, I've actually had other conversations as well, people who want to basically do the same thing, um, essentially using the notation Go library for verification. So uh, David, uh, another question. So when will that feature be ready with Ratify where we can actually do the end-to-end -end testing? with trust store and trust policy integration with notation, so. So yeah, I would say we have this, this refactoring go through, then mm -hmm. the Ratify development team could start on, on upgrading and implementing it. Okay, which means that we need to get this refactoring uh, completed sooner. So that, so is there anything uh, estimation or the scope based on our post this refactoring, how much is it going to take for Ratify to make that changes? Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think we have an estimate on it right now. Um, okay. But I okay. would say if we can, out of the six PRs that's there, I mean, if we can uh, prioritize the local refactoring, that would be helpful. Like the verif I'm sorry, the, the verification um, part. I, 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 does that make sense? I mean, unless unless you think the other ones are going to touch that same workflow, but um, <clears throat> I would also just say it would be good to. Uh, yeah, maybe have like been been review the verification changes just to make sure to, to provide any feedback. David, is there anybody on point to update the roadmap item for a milestone for ratify? I think the refactoring question came up because we tried to implement the trust on trust policy, right? Yeah, I mean, we already have an item, a backlog item. Um, to, okay. to, to do the work. I mean, and it's hard to do an estimation 
when you know that the refactoring is going to happen on the on the notation go side. Um, but I, I do think Ben Ben would be probably the best person to execute it um, since he's familiar with both notation and ratify. Um, but I, I so I would just say like if he can provide input uh, to Patrick's refactoring at least for the verification stuff, um, just to have any input, and then if we can prioritize that 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 PR or I guess if there's others of the six that need to be there, um, then that would help us kind of move things forward faster. <clears throat> Um, so uh, as discussed, right, David, with the trust or trust policy of ratify, that's going to be the beta release, right? Because the release for ratify itself is in Jan, right? That's what you said last meeting. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to do like roughly monthly monthly releases. For ratify, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When is that monthly monthly release happens for ratify? Is it end of the month? Yep. Do you? Do, I mean, you do you have? I mean, uh, particular interest in ratify? I mean, it seems like you you're desiring it to obviously have trust for trust policy. Is there something else that you can talk about here or off the call? No, I can jump. Yeah, I can jump in on that one. So I think yes. uh, we were just working with Jimmy, uh, who participates in Ratify's discussions from uh, representing how customers can use it on uh, AWS. Yeah. So we were just curious: will it be available at the same time as we have the RC one available? Because if we have RC one available, why not have Ratify available at the same time so customers can do signing and verification end to end? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's a great goal, but it does take time after RC one to do the work. Um, <laughs> yeah, so trying to see what we can do in parallel. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so I do think all right. So and I do think it, it is a bit of a timing thing. So so again, if if it's if we get this refactoring done for the verification part through, um, and we have after after that's in, then that's possible. We can you know, like start trying to work it in to ratify. So I think the only dependency is on getting notation go refactored. We don't need the notation CLI for yeah, right. Yeah. So right. Just like Auras has Auras RC, uh, Auras Go RC, which was released, and then we followed up with Auras CLI. I think it would be good to have a a date for notation go to kind of like RC out, and then we can take dependency on that as well. And that can be done maybe in parallel while notation CLI is releasing. Ratify also can kind of like tie all the loose ends. Um, but to David's point, we want to see what the refactoring looks like before we implement the whole trust policy because it is passing in configuration and piping it through, right? We can see if, if we can add uh, some, uh, you know, engineering time from uh, across in order to see this refactoring go faster. And as Sajay said, uh, we can refact, we can prioritize the notation go while we are actually working on the notation CLI as well, not like sequential, but parallel, but put more, you know, traction towards the notation go. So if that is done, right, if it is done, then it, it's good to estimate what is that ratify is going to take. It is one sprint work, it is two sprints work. What's, what's that work, right? David, you want to comment? Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think the big, I think, it, I mean, the refactoring is going to help for sure. Um, I mean, based on the, the, the th issue that's up there on the evaluation from Eric. Um, but, you know, I think the, the big variable is the, the policy file itself, right? And how, how we're going to figure that out. Right, because I think I think that's the that's the hard one of the, of the estimation side of things. Because um, let's say that you do have the local verify and that's done. Okay, well, great that you have the verify part. 
And this, like I said, this trust store part is also not, it shouldn't really be that hard. It's pretty similar to just what we have now, pulling the public search down on the disk. But the policy file is totally new, right? Like, you know, how do you, how do you create that? How do you, do you have the user do it? Do you, you know, is there like, what's the, what's the experience like? Um, that's a whole, that's, that hasn't been like flushed out yet. Right. Yeah, so I have some thoughts on that. We probably, uh, yeah, we can discuss it, but basically at a high level, right? Just like you can pass anything to a application running on a cluster, right? Can you just not pass it a directory where the config file is present? Just like you will pass a directory where the trust certificates are present. I was just thinking like that, but again, I'm probably simplifying it. So it's pretty much in line with that. Yes, the passing in the config is one part. Passing in the the uh, what you say the trust store and the trust policy was the second part. I, I think, but to David's point, uh, I hear that there is some amount of clarity we can add to what the RFM milestones look like. Yes, let me discuss more with Tori and David and he and Feynman over the week, and then we'll probably formulate something. Um, to kind of like shine some light on, okay, this is coming next and we'll sort these items for out of milestone one, two, three. David's already done one stab at it at this point. Yeah, that's fair. I think uh, basically, so yeah, I was, uh, yeah. who all is maintain, who are the maintainers on Redify? Like, can we, can Vani and I help in any way by joining the Redify project, help with any activities there? Yeah, I mean, Jimmy's been pretty active quite some time. He did the validation for AWS and all. So, um, I mean, if, if there's more input, definitely that would be welcome. I, I don't think, yeah, we are strapped for people on both sides on notation or as and ratify, all of us kind of like chiming in in different places. So, um, yes, if you, if you do feel like you want to join it, we want to keep it and kind of make the direction a little bit more clearer as well. Okay. Yeah, I think I know where to find the meeting invites for tomorrow. I'd like to join between one and I, one of us will join. Yeah, I'm just interested. So like one of the mental models I had that Ratify will call notation CLI and things will work. But now that Ratify is, and I realized later, Ratify is dependent on the notation Go. So a lot of the mm -hmm. user interface changes. Right. Hence because... my interest in understanding Ratify better. Right, so that's one of the reasons why the refactoring is important because Ratify does the access to, okay, one scenario I can talk about is the signatures can actually be sideloaded in Ratify, which I don't think we discussed here, but that's why it's important for uh, the caller to be able to pass in, here's my signature blob. I've resolved it somehow. I don't even know need to go to the registry. The other thing is authentication becomes challenging because you need to talk to the registry using a different auth model and identities on the cluster and whatnot. So there are a little bit of scenarios that need to get sorted out. And that's why notation go being refactored will be important to unblock those experiences. Does that make sense? I, I think I'm probably like talking, I mean, we are way over time right now, but. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It well, does. I think maybe, yeah, yeah. When when we join Ratify call tomorrow or some maybe next week, we can express more. We can talk more there. Uh, Bali, the last thing on for this call was uh, beta one today. Are we ready? I think Rakesh was telling me or, or earlier in the day that there may be a bug that we have found and uh, maybe we are not ready to cut beta one. I'm not sure, Rakesh, if you have updated information. Can we cut um, invitation beta one today? Yeah. I was testing notation with um, our plugin and found out found out that notation is not parsing the error messages correctly. So um, if uh, the plugin is not set up properly, then there is no way for notation users to uh, debug issues and uh, get the get the plugin to work. Uh, probably we need to fix that bug sooner. So, okay, so the question is, if we don't cut beta one today, when is the earliest we can cut beta one after we fix that issue? So we have to create that issue and then fix that issue, right? Okay. Uh, how much time do we need, uh, uh, Rakesh? Is it one more day? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it is about passing the 
json uh, from the plugin output so i would say just one day should be fine uh, if we don't find any other uh, issues in notation and is that and that's just uh so but you could ship the notation core out right you could, there's no nothing holding that back right uh the issue is in notation go library not core go yeah okay so yeah you could you could release the notation corgo and then yeah you'd have to wait for the other two because obviously notation go would be dependent on the cli cli would be yeah. dependent on uh, rakesh uh, sorry did you did you create a, a issue for that uh not yet i can okay. create that issue yeah and, and uh, you will uh, fix the issue, right? Uh, yeah, I can fix that issue. Oh, I, I'm just uh, checking. So, uh, because uh, if you already have some solution, you can you, you can fix it, and from our side, we we can uh, review it together today. Yeah, that makes sense. I will raise a PR for that. Okay, great. Um, by the way, for the other, uh applications uh, done by our side uh, currently uh, it, it works for for both the uh, quick start workflow and also the keyword remote sign flow we just did this application uh, yet, uh last night and it works so it seems currently the only issue is uh, what the cash uh, from yeah the issue is in the um, generate envelope um, command um, I don't think your plugin uh, uses that command, right? So probably that's why you did not come across the bug. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will go ahead and uh, create the issue and do the testing tomorrow, and we should have an update tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it, yes. Uh, I, I think I think uh, maybe notation Corgo we can cut the release firstly. Yeah. Then once the bug uh, is fixed in notation Go, then we uh, cut the notation Go release. Then uh, so, later notation. Fixed. So. I yeah, I have to drop, but I just wanted to raise up um, the fact that the cozy spec is still not merged. <laughs> uh, we got cozy in the code, but the spec's not merged. So um, Steve just called that out, and I just added code reviewers. But I, I, I feel like we should just merge it at this point because I'm pretty sure the code matches the spec. Um, but yeah, that's all. Wonderful. That's that's. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that was an item that was called like multiple the last two meetings yeah, yeah. so Jay, one last question uh if you're did, did you draw oh no so Jay, one last yeah, yeah question. I'm, I'm your mute, mute uh, yeah. challenges uh the the milestone of ratify right the beta one right. milestone uh it looks like we what is that that is being scoped as part of trust store and trust policy here? So um, I, I was just chatting with Rory on the side. We need to okay. define a uh, dependency of notation goes RC, like the refactoring for RC1. And mm -hmm. if notation go RC1 and notation CLI RC1 is released, uh, mm -hmm. the milestone should ratify, should align with that. So the, the idea is that RC1 of these tools should work with some milestone of ratify is what we want to get to. I don't have a clear idea as to what the milestone name is, but we need to put that in place maybe this week. Uh, so let's say notation go releases RC1. Mm -hmm. All of that will be absorbed into at least a basic scenario for somebody to be able to use a trust policy because um, ratify doesn't understand trust policies right now. Um, and sure. testing that out is important for us to kind of put that. I'm okay, maybe I'm probably like stepping over boundaries, but my guess is nothing short of uh, one to two weeks of implementation and test, and maybe cut a release um, yeah. in about three weeks to four weeks is what I'm anticipating. 
Okay. So what? Yeah, yes and uh, no kind okay. of okay so then what, uh, what is that's good to know like what what is it that uh, maybe we should clarify the question first what are you no, what, the, what i was thinking is the beta one kind of need to have that trust or trust policy feature embedded as part of one of the you know issue here which I did not see uh, amongst all the 22 open tasks. Right, right. right. So, so you're you're on the same page as I am. Uh, that's yeah. why I was chatting yeah. with Audi. I need to get sorted out as to maybe RC1 is tracking it globally and uh, mm -hmm. we need to kind of like expose it saying that there will be a implementation to ensure trust or trust policy is validated as well as the docs, right, for trust and for this end to end. Otherwise, it's going to be very unusable. So uh, yeah. I'll yeah. do some scrubbing with Toddy and David or, or in the next couple of days. Sure. Um, if, if possible, then uh, is it okay if we can schedule one meeting around that so that we know the scope of, uh, and also the estimation around the refactoring for mutation go and align with Pratify trust or trust policy feature. We can then, at least we can scope and estimate and then we can see when we can club those two for end-to-end -end testing. Yeah. So, Toddy, you wanted some time to kind of get your head around this, right? Yeah. So I've been uh, listening. Uh, first, hi, guys. I'm Toddy. I'm a principal program manager. Uh, I work together with Saji on Microsoft. Uh, I have a meeting tomorrow with David actually to discuss uh, all the plans for both notary and uh, ratify. Uh, so Sajay, uh, maybe one thing we can do is really to to sync up after that uh, because I, I need to get, as you said, my head around all these things. One of the things that I noticed, I attended kind of the last maybe two meetings is that this inter dependency of the projects and kind of uh, the lot of uh, incompatible changes that we are making right at the end which uh, makes it hard to really coordinate those things so uh let me think with david tomorrow and uh vani and uh, uh we can if if needed we can schedule something uh uh one off to actually have this discussion sure yeah. Mm -hmm. that okay. would help yeah at least that would help and see where we can add more engineering hours and how we and, can collaboratively establish this right mm -hmm. and uh, uh so are you guys on the slack channel can we communicate offline or you are not participating on the slack channel for notary and oras we are on slack channel for notary both i and samir uh, are there so you can uh, you can ping us okay. over there. Uh, just notary, we are not on ratify. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, uh, do you have any kind of deadlines that you are interested for uh, ratify specifically, or we were planning uh, both uh, ratify as well as notary for uh, November fifteenth, but we need to see what's possible. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, that uh, ratify <laughs> will be a little tough i can tell you right yeah. now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We, we put in all, all our eggs into getting notation and auras unblocked that's why yeah. because yeah. for kubecon we wanted to get auras out and we had the announcement yeah. docker up supporting the fallback and now notation is kind of in line so uh, i guess ratify is the last piece so uh, right but is new but uh, so as long as we can support him i think it should be fine as well but he's taking over the the broader third party signing solution and things like that. So I think yeah. he's the right person to include. Yeah. And I also saw today the migration, right? The ORS artifact to OCI was also right. completed, right? right? Yes. That's a very good thing, big win. And I think Nima from AWS is also continuing the testing. So I was collaborating with him as well. So that's the reason we need to come up with what what is that date, right? Like, uh, and until we don't, have a date i have seen in the past it just pushed us like months you know so i think yeah. we need to come up with the scope and the effort and the date so we can work backwards and see what's possible right 
yep. and see where exactly we need to put more traction. Okay, notation, yeah, here we need to have two engineers, three engineers. Then we have to move them to ratify and how we can get much out of it. So, so that's that's where the trading is going on. Uh, so maybe Wednesday is is that the good time to regroup? Yep. Yeah, uh, Wednesday will work. Okay, you are perfect. like in Seattle, right? No differences. I, in I am in Atlanta. I am in oh, Atlanta. Oh, you're in Atlanta. In East, East Coast. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. That's it's later. nine. Yeah. It's, okay. yeah. it's nine twenty p.m. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. should we should let you go. Yeah. Oh okay. no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. This is important. Yeah. Thanks, Samir. Okay. Anything else to add? No, I'm just gonna share. Uh, just one more thing on the ratify which is wondering who all are the maintainers on ratify is there, is there some other organization also helping or is mainly sajay you and your team or shivas and his team right, right now it's me and shivas team from engineering side david and Toddy uh, are kind of like helping uh, and grooming it as as needed so i think if uh, but jimmy's kind of already made contributions and things like that. and because yeah, it's yeah. under day slab it's kind of like isolated and uh, safe enough for multiple people to work on. We we put it under day slab because that was where Helm was born uh, so that we can donate it upstream and it's not under like under the Microsoft org and things like that. So we wanted to take care of kind of like giving it a story upstream um, and align with Gatekeeper and other CNCF projects. And the channel for Slack is also on CNCF. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, thanks. Okay, then Wednesday, uh, we can all meet uh, probably at the same time, 8 p.m. for me, EST, but 5 p.m. for Central. Is that Does that work? Sajay, E, Shivay? Yeah, I think, I think that's fine for me. I mean, Toddy. Okay. Yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. fine for me. Yeah, we can it's do good. that. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, Feynman, in, in, uh, would you mind actually schedule the meeting? I don't have access to Zoom. So, I mean, yeah, I sure. don't want the Zoom. Yeah. Wednesday, okay. yeah. Wednesday, same Wednesday, time. Feynman. Same yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's late. Good night. <laughs> I think uh, by that time, I think we need to get all the refactor questions answered, right? So, we should be on top of that. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you, everyone. Uh, thank sorry, you. sorry, nice sorry. Sorry. Uh, so e. it's, uh, it's uh, Wednesday, the same time, and we yes. use the same uh, uh, same Zoom meeting uh, of the yes. location. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I think we don't need to schedule anything since uh, the meeting link is, uh, is always available. And you just put it on the calendar if you can. Or yeah, yeah, we can we can send the invitation for reminder. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we will use sure. the same link. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe Vani and myself are not on the meeting because I don't have anything. Uh, so you, if you guys can, oh, we can forward it. Yeah, yeah, forward the invitation. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Hey, okay. this Great. was a great meeting, guys. Thank you very much, and happy Halloween Thank for you. everyone who is celebrating <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Bye. Enjoy Halloween. Nice yeah. Bye bye. 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 bye.